Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Peter Hu from Initial Media, uh, which is a new startup in Hong Kong. Uh, this is relatively new. We are just uh, founded for one year. So let me give you a bit background of us. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so this is a bit about us. Uh, we are based in Hong Kong, and our network spans all the world. Uh, we have the coverage uh, everywhere, but uh, the publication is mainly in Chinese. So it's for global uh, Chinese reading populations. Uh, and uh, over the last one year, uh, we have done a lot of works, uh, and there are some of, uh, awards. Uh, this is a glimpse into our newsroom. Uh, and uh, to say this is because uh, probably later we will have some Chinese characters on the screen. Uh, but uh, I think it does not hinder our understanding of the general process or the problem or the project. Okay. So those are some of the uh, representative works. Uh, we have cross-regional uh, coverage uh, and cross-continental uh, coverage and some digital formats. Uh, those are glimpses of, of our awards. And today I'm going to present one of them, uh, this one, uh, which is uh, the data analysis of Hong Kong's Legislative Council. Um, okay. So let me first give you a bit background of this council. This council is like some like Congress in some countries, uh, but in Hong Kong we call the Legislative Council. Um, basically, uh, we have uh, 70 members there. Uh, people can propose motions and vote for certain motions. Um, why this is important is because uh, uh, in the next month, the September 4th, we will have the next election, which happened uh, four years per time. So this is a big event. Uh, and before that, we want to know the past to get some insights. OK, so who can vote? Of course, there are 70 members uh, who can vote for certain bills or motions, and uh, who can propose motions. So of course, those 70 members, they can propose motions. And besides that, uh, we also have some government departments who can propose their own bills. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you know some uh, contest about Hong Kong, China, uh, you probably know uh, currently, uh, the environment is a bit fragmented. There are some people who are pro-Beijing, uh, the central government of China, and who is anti-Beijing. Uh, so one can be so-called pro-establishment, who, who is more closer with the government and also to Beijing. And the other is called pan-democracy. So that's the um, background. Uh, then let's look at what we can, uh, our cooking materials. Then we think of what we can do. OK, so we get data from the Legislative Council uh, for the past years. Uh, there are 71 unique members. I said that there are 70 members uh, because one of the members created the council last year, and another a new one joined. So there are 71 unique members. And some government departments, uh, in total, there are three, more than 3,000 motions. Uh, OK, so this is uh, what our data look at. Uh, look like so. Uh, you see, this is uh, XML file uh, which is structured. Uh, if you turn this one into some uh, table format, uh, it is basically saying, okay, we have some data. Uh, we have uh, what, what are the topics and what are the uh, member, uh, what, what are the voters, and uh, what do they vote? Whether they support the bill, they reject the bill, uh, or nothing uh, or else. So uh, abstractly, uh, this is uh, what it look like. Uh, we have so many tuples. Those are the voting records. Uh, and above is the core data. Of course, we have some other auxiliary information, uh, like the stream presentation of the topic. Um, OK, so as a starter, let me share with you just uh, one example of what we can do with the data. Uh, I think many of the people here are doing data journalism. So given this data set, probably you already know what to do. Uh, for example, uh, let's do some uh, time series serious analysis of uh, the number the number of votes per week. So you can see uh, there are some very uh, interesting pattern that over the past four, four years, four terms, uh, the large chunk of uh, bills are <laughs> either passed or rejected during that, that region. You see that? So basically it's saying that, OK, the council is uh, <laughs> like data like cancer. Uh, why? Uh, you see, those are the uh, spikes. And uh, those are the end of uh, each uh, logical term. Uh, and uh, usually, uh, in June, uh, in, in April, government will propose some budget bills. Uh, and uh, usually, the back payment of the government happens in, in June. 
And, and, and you see, uh, from uh, April to June, usually the, the government is operated as some temporary budget. So if the council does not pass the uh, bills related with the, the budget, then uh, government will go get bankruptcy. <laughs> so they are like the data line catchers. Okay. So th this is uh, one, uh, one example of the story we can tell from the data. Uh, of course, you can do a lot, a lot uh, different statistics and to get insights and combine the insights uh, and domain knowledge, probably you can get a story. Um, but today we are going to share with you some other technique uh, that is uh, without knowing the proper domain knowledge, probably we can still uncover some patterns, uh, which is the charm of the so-called data science. Okay. So here is the uh, difference between uh, the traditional way and the data scientific way. Uh, traditionally, if you already know what you want to look at, say the time series of the uh, number of votes, uh, probably you just do query, right? If you know database, you have different query languages. If you don't know the database, you can use a spreadsheet, you can uh, do a scrape to get all kinds of uh, statistics, uh, as long as you know what you want to look at. But for the data mining way, uh, the catch is, uh, we usually we don't know uh, what to look at uh, or we don't have the proper domain knowledge But we still can use some of the data mining tools to get patterns Okay, so here comes the main course um, since, since this talk will be very short. So uh, let's go straight into the uh, The main course that is originally we have the uh, voting records as tuples, right? You can reorganize it uh, into some kind of tabular format uh, I think some of you already know pivot table uh, and which is useful for this case. So for, uh, for each row, it represents a member. For each column, it represents a topic. And for each cell, it represents uh, how this member votes for this uh, topic. And this is our uh, starting point. And after getting this matrix, what we can do? Uh, first thing we can do is like this. We can generate a heat map, right? You can uh, do some statistics uh, say for for each member for each member of the logical uh, uh, you count how many bills uh, he proposed and you count uh, how many bills are supported by the others so each column each row is one member and plus some uh, government departments and each column is uh, one member so in this way the darker the color that means uh, uh, the column the column member is more supportive of the row member so in, in this way you can do this uh, uh, heat map and you can visualize uh, who support who. However, this looks like just a uh, random noise, right? <laughs> you, you don't see you don't see anything. Uh, so the next question is, uh, how do we order properly order the members, right? Because there are two axes. If we properly order them, then we can see some pattern. And uh, usually, if you have domain knowledge, then uh, what you can do is like this. First, you know there are two camps, so you put the two camps uh, separately. And within two camps, you know, there are different parties. And you group people by parties. And probably in this way, uh, the votes are better organized and you can see some patterns. Uh, but this is not a data-driven way. So for data-driven way, uh, we do something that is called a dimensionality reduction. Uh, okay, I'll give more details in the afternoon, but uh, here, uh, I'll just tell you the results. After doing so-called dimensionality reduction, uh, in this case, we use one technique called the PCA. Uh, it reduces the 3,000 dimension, uh, which is a very large table, into just uh, one dimension. That is, for 70 members, everyone will get a real number. And uh, this real number represents his political standing. An uh, interesting thing comes here. Uh, if you plot these members uh, according to their uh, political standing, and you will find, okay, this really fits our domain knowledge, even if you don't know that before. For example, uh, these two, two guys in the left and in the right, they are actually the most ex extreme of the pandemic quads and the most extreme of the pro-establishment, uh, which fits our domain knowledge. And the guy in the middle, this Chen Yuxing, uh, actually he is the president of, Legical, uh, of the Legislative Council. Uh, as president, he does not propose any motions and he does not vote for any motions. Uh, that is why uh, after this dimension reduction, he sits in the middle. Okay, and here comes the magic. You see, previously we have the heat map, uh, which means who su uh, how supportive one member is to another member, and this looks like random noise. And uh, using dimensionality reduction, we have the spectrum, the political spectrum uh, of the members. And you combine these two. You use, uh, we use this 
uh, spectrum to rank or to order the members. And you can see uh, for this figure, some pattern evolves, right? There are two uh, large chunks. In the upper left, this is so-called pan Democrats, which is smaller, but is cohesive and uh, united. And uh, in the uh, lower right corner, this is so-called pro-established. Uh, they are larger, they span larger areas, but there are some holes in, in the uh, voting patterns, so they're not so united. Uh, and if you follow this heat map and if you check more the details, you will find some other interesting points. Um, okay, so this is the so-called dimensionality reduction, uh, which will reduce the large matrix into a smaller one. Uh, I'll, I'll skip the technical details. i uh, just show you one video, and uh, this video uh, will, will tell you some stories. On the 18th of June 2015, the pro-establishment legislators bungled their political reform vote. Afterwards, internal communications were leaked. Can this fiasco be foretold? We try to answer this by studying voting patterns. We collected Liege Co. voting data from 2012 to the 18th of June 2015 to examine the voting patterns of the pro-establishment and pan-democracy camp. We first sought the 70 legislators by their voting inclinations. The makers of motions constitute the column, and the voters constitute the row. Each cell represents how a voter is supportive of a mover. The brighter the color, the stronger the support. This cell is very bright. That means Loon Kwok Hong, long hair, is very supportive of his own motions. Every row has 70 such cells. Combine all 70 rows. We arrive at a 70 by 70 matrix. Liege co-president Sang Yok Sing doesn't make motions and only vote present. He can be used as the reference. Dividing the pro-establishment and the pan-democracy, the upper left area of Tsang Yok Sing represents the internal voting of pan-democracy camp. If we compare the two camps, we can see that the pan-democracy camp is smaller but internally supportive, and the pro-establishment camp is larger yet less cohesive. Let's take a deeper look into the pan-democracy camp. Loon Kwok Hong, Albert Chan, Raymond Chan, and Raymond Wong led the filibuster in the council. They voted for each other, but most of their motions were not supported even by other pan-democracy legislators. However, if we exclude these four, the pan-democracy camp is clearly united in their votes. In comparison, the pro-establishment camp is not as united. Nevertheless, some of them are popular among the pan-democrists, such as Regina Yip, Paul Tse, and Kwok Wei Kyung. More interestingly, Poon Sui Peng is a pro-establishment legislator, yet he receives overwhelming support from the Democrats, but not from pro-establishment legislators. On the other hand, only few Democrats gained pro-establishment support, such as Charles Mock and Ronnie Tong. One more thing, the diagonal represents how one supports their own motions and should be bright. Tsang Yok Sing doesn't make motions. Therefore his cell is black. Lam Tae Fei didn't make motions. Therefore his cell is also black. This is Starry Lee. Her cell was not very bright because she voted against her own motions. So why did she vote against herself? Why Poon Sui Ping was more popular? Okay, so the, uh, that's the video. Uh, I'll skip the you, you know the voiceover sounds weird because it's generated by machine. <laughs> the original version is in Chinese, so we use machine to translate to English. Okay, uh, so uh, before we wrap up, just to show you that uh, given this dimensionality reduction technique, we can analyze how the camp evolves. Uh, we can all even analyze how the uh, political standings of the members evolves. For example, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, after the first time we released this result, uh, one of the members is standing there, uh, clearly in the middle, right? So people say, okay, this one uh, acts differently from what he speaks. Uh, okay, so over the years, you can see there is declining. Okay, so um, basically it tells us, given these techniques, we can uncover some patterns without uh, even some domain knowledge. Um, if you are interested, you can come to the workshop and uh, I will show you uh, more insights and uh, how, how we achieve this. And the uh, workshop time, oh, the workshop time is uh, three to five p.m. Uh, today at uh, U1. Uh, thank you. Thank you.